Hello, Flight Simmers. In this video, I want to provide a brief overview of the autopilot functions in the X Rotors AW139 at the time of this recording, version 4.01. This video is intended to be a brief overview of the autopilot functions as they differ pretty significantly from other aircraft you may be used to. This video is not intended to be a comprehensive deep dive into those systems. So let's get in the helicopter and let's take a look at our controls. Starting here in the center console, we have the force trim control on or off and the collective yaw trim function here. These two functions basically are handing off with force trim the cyclic and with collective yaw trim we're handing off the anti-torque and the collective functions to the helicopter. Once we've done this, the helicopter has control of those functions. We can no longer move the stick in this module without some additional buttons being manipulated. We'll go into that here in a minute. I do strongly suggest for force trim that you have a bind set for that on a joystick or a key bind and that would be force trim toggle. The other important thing with force trim is going to be a FT release or force trim release. And here you can see the functions of force trim toggle and force trim release, which we'll go over later, is controlled by that little button there, or simulated. Okay, so going into the autopilot panel here, we have standby, we have heading hold, we have navigation, which couples with VNAV, indicated airspeed mode, which holds our current indicated airspeed, approach mode, which will basically allow the aircraft to follow guidance from an RNAV approach or an ILS approach, a vertical speed mode in hundreds of feet per minute ascending or descending, a decelerate mode, I'm trying to look up and remember what the, I don't know what the TDH mode does, altitude hold mode, this holds the current altitude the aircraft is at, Altitude capture mode. This allows us to capture a preset altitude. So, for example, if we are cruising along at 1500 feet and we need to go up to 3000 feet, we would then put in 3000 feet into the altitude pre select and then hit altitude capture. And then the aircraft would be in vertical speed mode and we would set that vertical speed in hundreds of feet per minute to ascend to the 3000 foot pre-select. Once the aircraft reaches that 3,000 foot pre-select, it will switch out of altitude capture mode automatically and go into altitude hold mode. The PFD function here dictates which primary flight display and FMC the flight, um, the autopilot system I should say, is taking input from. This is the radar height hold button and this is the hover button which allows the aircraft to uh, autopilot to hold the aircraft in a hover if uh, some conditions are met which basically you have to have the aircraft very stable before the hover will work you can't have very much at all forward or rear left or right uh, movement or any ascending or descending movement with a helicopter below that panel we have the autopilot one and two channels the autopilot couple button this couples the uh, autopilot to the control servos, stability augmentation system, and this is the normal mode of flight when the pilot is in operation and the flight computers are assisting the pilot with keeping the aircraft stable. And then ATT mode, this is when the aircraft is now in control of the uh, flight control services and we're basically the uh, we're basically the passenger. So Let's take a look at our FMC and let's enter a very, very basic flight plan in here. So if you don't know how to use this FMC, there's there's tutorial videos on the stock FMC, but we're going to go ahead and enter our uh, current location, which is KAUS. And we see that that clears everything out there. We're going to go ahead and put our destination, which is Dallas-Fort Worth, KD. FW, that's about 170 miles north of us. And then we're going to put in a flight number. These are the three minimum data fields that must be entered in the stock X-Plane FMC as of X-Plane 11 in order for us to be able to X, 
uh, execute change and, and affect a, uh, a um, flight plan. Now, you're going to need a bind for this. The aircraft is missing an FMS execute 3D button here. So this is one of those things that you're going to need to bind. Now, I have you're going to bind the following function, which is going to be navigation radios, FMS pilot, FMS EXEC, which is the execute button. I've bound mine to return. Some other binds, let's go over real quick while we're here. Uh, They're useful. Pitch trim, up, down, left, and right. Autopilot altitude down and autopilot altitude up. Self-explanatory, but that's to preset your altitudes. Heading up and heading down. This is to manipulate our heading bug. And then autopilot VVI down and up. This is to set our ascent or descent rate in hundreds of feet per minute. Those are some useful binds to have. Okay, so we've got Austin and we've got DFW programmed in. And we're gonna go ahead and I believe we've got that executed. So if we look at our progress page, we can see that we've got a problem here. So we've got Austin to DFW programmed in. We're gonna go ahead and get our uh, FMC set up here. So let's go ahead and brighten up our displays so you guys can see these. Okay, so personal preference, I prefer to have mine in the arc mode. So we're going to hit HSI to cycle to arc mode. Now, currently, the aircraft is getting its data from FMS2, but normally when you start an aircraft, it's going to be getting its data from the nav radio 1. If we cycle to nav again, we're going to get nav radio 2. As you can see. And if we want to go to the FMS input we're going to hit LNAV. Now that's telling us now the aircraft's FMS is providing the data here and we can see here we've got an FMS waypoint of Austin which is one mile. What the aircraft wants to do at this particular time is it wants to take off from this runway and if the aircraft had control it would want to fly over the middle of the airport and then start heading towards Dallas-Fort Worth which is going to be a little bit of a problem. So I want to show you how to work through that. So let's go ahead and one we're going to disable the uh, B Betty system here so she's not yelling at us when we uh, retract the landing gear a little bit low. We're going to go ahead and get off the ground. I apologize in advance for my flying because I am used to flying in VR only, so I'm not really good with this 2D stuff. But let's go ahead and get the aircraft off the ground. Oopsie. I'm not going to edit that out because... uh, I'm just a dummy trying to fly this thing and help others out. So that engine stabilized. Let's get out of here. All right, so off we go northbound to Austin. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and get the aircraft trimmed with a beep trim function or the basic uh, trim functions. We don't want to use the force trim functions, at least in my opinion, because those are very broad adjustments the beep trim is much finer so right now i am just simply trimming the nose down a little bit to the left a little bit just to get ourselves in some stable flight here this is important because once we go into auto uh the force trim modes in the autopilot control the helicopter is going to start trimming itself but if the helicopter was significantly out of trim when we engage the autopilot system then the aircraft is going to be significantly out of trim when we disengage it, and you might have a very violent reaction to helicopters. So to avoid that, try and trim the helicopter first before we go into autopilot modes. So I'm going to show you our first little issue here, um, and this is just an, uh, a, const- a, a part of the simulation, not the module, but the uh, actual FMC simulation, the default simulation, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to give the autopilot control. So to do that, we're going to turn our force trim on. This puts us in the ATT mode, and we're going to go ahead and couple the autopilot by selecting a nav mode and this is coupled the autopilot now just as we stated earlier let's go ahead and put it in altitude capture as we discussed earlier that captures our altitude of 2600 feet and now we're just going to basically do circles around the austin airport all day long because what the helicopter is trying to do now is it is trying to get to the entry point between austin and dfw that's not what we want it to do we want it to go directly to dfw And this can confuse people that are new to the module trying to figure out why is the autopilot not doing what I want. So if we get into a situation like this where the helicopter is doing its orbits, trying to enter that point, which it 
it can't quite get the arc right based off the speeds to get to the entry point on the flight plan. We're going to go ahead and come back down here and we're going to go direct. We're going to type in our destination where we want to go, which is KDFW. And then we're going to touch the top left soft key where these arrows are. Now, this is where that FMS execute button comes in that I was telling you about. Right now, we see the mod here. We've made a modification to it. So in order to execute that mod, we hit enter. And now we see DFW is now our current point it is 166 nautical miles at 008 degrees. So now the helicopter should turn and continue to turn. We're heading east now. It should turn north and we should acquire that magenta line and continue on to our destination. Apologize for that. So here comes our magenta line from our, when we executed that function, we basically told it from our present position, go that direction. So now we should see the helicopter start to decrease its bank and turn to intercept that magenta line. And here we go. Now we're flying along and we decide we're going to go ahead and divert. So we want to go to Houston now. Same thing. We go to our direct to page. We're actually already there. So we're going to type in K. We're going to go to Houston Hobby. It's not really a divert because that's a long way off, but we put that in. Boom. And now Houston Hobby is selected. We are currently 164 miles from that. We have the mod button indicating the FMC is waiting for input. We hit that FMS execute button or FMC execute button and boom. Now the helicopter's changed course. And it's going to head towards Houston Hobby. Now let's go ahead and go over some other functions here. You can see I'm manipulating that heading bug right now. Physical controls are over here, altitude select and heading select. We're going to go over some of the other altitude functions. So it, the helicopter is going to try and go east towards Houston. We're going to stop that. We're going to go northeast towards Memphis. So we're going to come over here. And uh, current bug in 4.0.1 is when we hit the heading button, it's going to start following the heading mode, but these two are not going to extinguish. And the heading mode is not going to illuminate. So we've clicked that, and now we can see the helicopter has stopped its turn towards Houston. And now we're turning towards Memphis. We're heading that northeast direction. But the lights don't correspond. I'm sure this is something that X-Rotors will fix quickly. He's always good about those things. Um, if this bugs you, what you can do, and if this confuses you, is just click on your nav modes to extinguish them and then re-click heading mode. And now we can see heading mode illuminated here. Now, let's go over a couple of the other functions here. We, we went over the altitude capture mode. Now let's go over or the altitude hold. Now let's go over altitude capture. So we're cruising at 2,060 feet. Let's say we want to go up to 2,200 feet. So we've used the autopilot uh, altitude up to select 2,200 feet here with the core store spawning button here. And now we're going to go to Alta and we're going to use that VVI bind. So right now, it's telling us we want to capture 2200. We're at 2100. So now we're going to go ahead and VVI up. And we're going to continue up at 200 feet per minute until we get to that altitude. If we just hit vertical speed and we didn't hit the altitude capture button, then it would just continue to ascend until the helicopter could not ascend anymore. As you can see, as we approach our um, captured altitude, we're going to go ahead and increase that to 200, 400 feet per minute. The autopilot automatically switches to altitude hold as soon as it reaches that altitude. Same thing on a descent. If we want to go back down to 2,100 feet, we can come over here and click Alta. Vertical speed is automatically engaged. It set the vertical speed to the last one we had, which is 100. We don't want that. We want to descend, so we do 200 feet per minute. Let's go to 400 feet per minute. And down we go. And this will switch to altitude capture as soon as we get there. Uh, let's go over a couple other functions of the autopilot or how you can manipulate the autopilot system for new pilots. So right now we're in altitude hold mode. In the current altitude hold mode, the aircraft is holding 
this pitch level and we're maintaining about 126 knots indicated, 131 across the ground. Now, if we want to slow down, all we have to do in this mode, where we've got force trim enabled, but the collective and yaw trim is disengaged, autopilot's coupled, is we start to lower the collective. Now, by lowering the collective, we're decreasing the angle on the blades. We're producing left list, lift. So for the helicopter to maintain the same altitude it was earlier, it's having to pitch the nose up slightly, which is resulting in an airspeed decrease until the aircraft is going slow enough that it can maintain that altitude with this new attitude. So as you can see here, it's a nice easy way to control your speeds. Same thing, if we wanna increase our speed, we're in altitude hold mode. We're gonna go ahead and start pulling back on the collective. And the aircraft is subsequently going to pitch down to try and maintain this altitude. And that gives us a corresponding increase in our airspeed. Now let's say we want a nice slow descent. We already went over the vertical speed mode to get down, but there's another option that we have here. We can go and we can tell the aircraft to hold our indicated airspeed. Now the aircraft is going to funk, um, excuse me, turned off altitude hold. So now the aircraft is gonna try and hold that indicated airspeed. So again, if we lower the collective in order to maintain that airspeed, the aircraft's gonna pitch the nose down to try and maintain that airspeed and sacrifice altitude. So we can sit there and manipulate our descent. It's almost like a flight level change mode in a normal aircraft. We can manipula manipulate our descent via collective input. And the exact same thing, if we wanna slow our descent, we pull back on the power. And if we pull back too much, we'll actually start to ascend because now we've got more collective and in order for the aircraft to hold that airspeed, it now has to pitch up and we start to climb. So you can use that both ways. When we want to go back to normal flight, we're just going to hit the force trim toggle, which is going to go from ATT mode back to stability augmentation system mode and decouple the autopilot. And now we have full control of the aircraft again. We want to give control of the aircraft back. It's just as simple as force trim toggle back on again. And then we need to verify that right now we've got the force trim on, but the autopilot is not coupled. ATT mode is engaged, so we couple the autopilot, and now the autopilot has control again. The last function we'll go over is force trim. So right now, if we wanted to make an adjustment to the flight path via force trim, we're going to disengage the hold now the aircraft's force trimmed. It's holding itself in this current position. Let's say we want to enter a nice right bank. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hold that force trim release bind we talked about earlier. And now I'm going to move my cyclic to the right. I'm now going to release the force trim release switch and then center my stick. And as you can see, the helicopter stays in that position because the stick stays where I left it. Now, when I hit the force trim release again, the virtual cyclic is going to quickly snap to the position of the physical cyclic, as you can see there. And now if I wanna pull back while holding and depressing the force trim release, I can then release the force trim release and now we are ascending. And it stays exactly where we left it. Same thing, descent left or right. I have full control of the helicopter as long as I am holding the force trim release button. As soon as I release the force trim release, the cyclic will lock in that position. This can confuse people that are new to the module because they're trying to get control frantically. So again, that force trim toggle is very important to have. Once you want control, just force trim toggle in the SAS mode and the aircraft is yours again, right into the ground. So I hope you guys have found this video useful. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have a great day.